Why was Sega selling Nintendo games? How could a live-action arcade game exist before digital video? And what movie did it appear in? Critical Kate is on the case. Wild Gunman was the first Nintendo game in a movie, but it wasn't this movie and it wasn't this Wild Gunman. Let's start at the beginning. Most people think Donkey Kong was the first Nintendo game released in America. Others will point out that Radar Scope came first, but those were just the first games released by Nintendo of America. Before 1981, Nintendo distributed their games through companies who were already established in America. Nintendo's first two releases, Wild Gunman and Shooting Trainer, were sold by none other than Sega. At the time, Sega was well known for their elaborate electromechanical games like Gunfight in 1970, so it was odd when Nintendo announced their own western shooter would also be called Gunfight. We can't know definitively whether Nintendo was aware of Sega's popular and highly influential arcade game, but the Nintendo toy they ended up naming their arcade after, 1972's Wild Gunman, looked suspiciously like a home version of Sega's Gunfight, and Nintendo's 1976 toy Custom Gunman also resembled Sega's Gunfight. So you might say that Sega brought everything full circle when they distributed Wild Gunman in America. To avoid confusion with the other two and a half Wild Gunmans, I refer to this arcade game as Wild Gunman 74, the year it was released in Japan. What made Wild Gunman 74 so revolutionary is that it was like playing a movie, but it might have been a little too out of its time. The purchase price of the cabinet cost between three and six times the amount of a typical arcade attraction. By the time the NES remake showed up in the late 80s, the original was a distant memory. So, when people saw Mad Dog McCree in 1990, most reacted as if live-action games were a brand new concept. These would later be called FMV games, short for Full Motion Video, a genre that paved the way for interactive movies like Bandersnatch. Mad Dog McCree was considered the first fully live-action FMV game, preceded only by animated games like Dragon's Lair. Both games used a technology called Laserdisc, a precursor to DVD that allowed the game to skip directly to a new scene based on player input. By contrast, the videotape and film could only be wound forwards or backwards, making anything resembling an FMV game simply impossible. Except, that's exactly what Nintendo did, two decades earlier. Here's how it worked. Wild Gunman 74 used not one, but two 16mm projectors. The reels ran in synchronization, but only one was projecting image on the screen at a time. So if you were too slow, the first projector would continue running and inform you you lost. But if your aim was true, the other projector would immediately switch on and your opponent would fall to the floor. Unfortunately, footage of the game is difficult to come by. Only two sources are known to exist online. The first is an experimental film from 1978 with the creative title of Wild Gunman. After the eyes flash on the screen, shoot. Put your pistol in the holster and prepare to draw. Director Craig Baldwin spliced together repurposed footage into a vague critique of cowboys and consumerism wrapped in conspiracy. But without intending to, he ended up forever preserving snippets from an otherwise forgotten piece of gaming history, albeit in pretty rough shape. The other online source is handheld footage from 2011, demonstrating a working cabinet located in France. While not the preferred way of capturing on-screen visuals, the video does do a good job of showing the cabinet in action, including a brief glimpse under the hood. While reading the comments, one in particular caught my eye. What is gas? And could this be a potential third source? A little digging revealed that Gas was a raunchy comedy from 1981 that bombed its way out of theaters just as Donkey Kong was bursting into arcades. In fact, the movie was so poorly received that it was never released on DVD, so if I wanted to watch it, I'd have to track it down on VHS. Surprisingly, what I found didn't disappoint. I mean, the movie disappointed. Wow, did it disappoint. But this one scene? Well here, just watch. I don't want excuses, I want results. Boys, I started off at ground zero, huh? A punk kid in a pair of black jeans, huh? I walked into them damn Texas oil fields 49 years ago, huh? Yeah, with nothing but a pair of hands, a strong back, plenty of steam, a bit of the seat, and a whole lot of bullshit. I lived the American dream, 
I built an empire. Yes, Daddy. Sure did, Daddy. Sure did. Now that you've got your uh, college diplomas and you're allegedly grown up, I think you're only missing one thing. Ball! Oh, come, oh, come on, on, Daddy. I, was, I tried. It was right. all his fault. Uh, I'm afraid you got a little short change in that department. Nothing to do with the, the old man, of course. Uh, Oh, hell! You know that old, that old saying that don't matter whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game? That's scary. That's bullshit. The bottom line is winning. Naturally, the moment I dropped cold hard cash on an out-of-print movie that otherwise deserved to be forgotten, the whole thing suddenly showed up on YouTube. But my copy doesn't have this little graphic in the corner. What's great about the scene itself is that the game footage is presented in such high quality and with unfaded colors. I suspect the editor likely spliced pieces from the reels directly into the film. The only downside is that the enemy's eyes get cut off. Gas was filmed open matte, which means the top and bottom of the picture was matted out when shown in theaters. Fortunately, the VHS is presented in full frame, yet the game footage still gets cut off because its aspect ratio is essentially a square. Surprisingly, the back of the arcade flyer reveals that even more picture existed. In fact, some of this uncropped footage appeared in a custom Gunman TV commercial. Sadly, the commercial doesn't exist online, but it does raise an interesting question. Does the footage still exist in Nintendo's archives? Let's talk about preservation. In total, Nintendo released four 16mm arcade games before going all-in on pixel-based graphics. But will these games ever be playable outside of collector's circles? I almost thought Nintendo was going to do it. In 2017, they opened a live presentation with this teaser. But like discovering your princesses in another castle, it ended up being just a promo for an overpriced tech demo called 1-2 Switch. But on the upside, it does demonstrate that Wild Gunman's basic gameplay could easily be replicated using Joy-Cons. The main obstacle is that these games weren't ROM-based, so even if you digitize the film elements, there's nothing to emulate. The games would have to be simulated, essentially recreating the programs from scratch. Personally, I'd love to see even just the footage itself digitized and made available online. But for the games to be made playable, our best hope would be Hamster's Arcade Archive series. Nintendo allowed them to release the long-lost arcade Sky Skipper, so maybe the 16mm games wouldn't be completely out of the question. The only problem is, I can't imagine them getting around to it until they finished releasing literally everything else. But if there's one arcade port they're never going to release, it's Wild Gunman 84. Not because it's lost, or because it's incompatible, but because this arcade game never existed. The cabinet was just a movie prop, and even the in-game footage was fake. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. This video was made possible by supporters like Tony Bow, Pizza Van Bruggen, Steven Reed, Brian Anderson, E.C. Myers, and Billy Voda. Thanks for watching.